Well, I just want to tell you a little bit about myself so that you don't think I popped out of the womb a health nut. Uh, certainly not. I grew up in Doraville, Georgia, which is a seriously down home part of uh, Georgia outside of Atlanta. And I grew up eating chicken fried steak and barbecued ribs and burgers and pizza and all the stuff that everyone around me ate. And I loved every second of it. I didn't think twice about it. I wasn't stupid. I wasn't a bad person. I just ate what my mom put in front of me and what she told me what was, what was good for me. So I, I loved my life. Um, but my life, my childhood, my upbringing did not serve me well. They created, it created some bad habits, right? My habits were born from community and tradition. It's what was important to me, community and tradition. So I uh, was not served well by that. And as I moved into my 20s, it started becoming apparent why. I put on about 15 to 20 pounds, but I rationalized it and I thought, you know, everybody puts on 15, 20 pounds when they get out of school and they go into their lives and that's kind of the American way, so I'm not gonna be hard on myself. And, um, you know, it was more and more as the years went on. And I also had really bad acne that never went away when I wasn't a teenager anymore. And so I had these welts on my face and I felt like I was kind of a leper. Got really sensitive and really self-conscious and everything. And my energy never picked up. I grew up not a sporty kid. I was a couch potato and I uh, was not you know, really out there playing with friends as a kid and that kind of transferred up into my adulthood and I realized that I'm just really not out there enjoying my life, pursuing a career, being passionate. I just didn't have that vitality. So that was all well and good, but the kicker was I started to see people in my family and the people that I grew up with start to get sick. I started seeing some diabetes, heart disease, cancer, a little bit of stroke, and we were getting sick. So I thought, oof, something's gotta change here. So I set about my path and I thought, I am going to get healthy. I'm gonna just change my habits and I'm gonna get healthy. So I started trying all these diets. I started that uh, crazy grapefruit diet. I don't know if you remember that, uh, didn't work. And then I went for the high protein, low carb thing that everyone was talking about. There were a million different kinds of, you know, Atkins or whatever. And uh, that was, you know, good at first, but didn't, didn't hold. And I started trying the juice fast that everyone was talking about. And all of these things were, for me, just a miserable experience. I was feeling deprived, I was angry, I was just miserable, I hated it. You know, and I was so mad at myself that I, got, I couldn't just change my ways. What was wrong with me? I was ashamed. I was really deeply ashamed of myself. And so one day, I was playing with my little chihuahua, Lotsi, and she was on her back and I was just making myself feel better saying, oh, I just love this animal so much. She's so cute. And I swear she was smiling from ear to ear. And she made me so happy. And I was thinking to myself, I love this dog so much. Animals are just the most magical creatures. And then this little voice inside of me said, well, if you love animals so much, why the hell are you eating them? And I was like, oh, what? Well, uh, because I always have, because it's a habit, because I like the taste of meat. And so the word meat popped into my mind, and as I'm petting Lotsi, my little chihuahua, I was like, meat, animal, okay. So I started picturing her in a um, factory farm where you know most of our meat and dairy comes from, and I started picturing her in these tiny little cages that chickens and pigs were in for their whole life. And I saw how freaked out she would be. I mean, just like, I, she's the social creature. She's part of our family, you know? I, I knew her emotions, I knew when she was sad, or I knew when she was anxious, or worried, or fearful, or when she wanted to go for a walk. And so, visualizing her in a tiny cage 
was just sort of eye-opening. And then I saw her in my mind being marched off to the slaughterhouse um, kill floor, and I could just see that she'd just be shaking and her eyes were blazing and, and everything about her was just horrified. And so in that moment, a light bulb went off in my head. And I thought to myself, wait a second, if you don't want your dog to experience that, why would you want another animal to experience that? Because I, I realized that the only difference between my dog and that little pig or chicken or calf or, or whatever was that I knew her. You know, I had spent time with her. So she was a somebody, not a something. And so I thought, okay, well, you got to challenge yourself then. If you don't want her to experience that, you're going to be a hypocrite if you don't want other, experience, uh, other animals to experience that. So that was step one, actually, that was born into my process of getting healthy, losing weight. And it was to have an emotionally charged intention that's just bigger than my interest, my personal interest. For me, that was that I didn't want to see animals suffer. It was a killer to me. I couldn't bear to think about it. I couldn't bear to watch it. So that became like the door opening for me. It was the craziest thing. So every time I wanted to eat a burger or a pizza or a steak or something like that, I'd go on my computer and I would Google factory farm slaughter video. Like if I wanted a hamburger, I would go to, you know, beef slaughter video. And it was like, whoa. So suddenly, there was no, it wasn't like just white knuckling, I've got to just not eat it. It was like, that was horrible. Of course I don't want to eat it. So that was step one, right? But now step two is born, quickly follows that, was like, oh my God, but if I don't eat meat, and this is the stuff that I grew up on, and everybody knows that you need lots of you know, animal protein to be slim and healthy. So step two was that I have to educate myself. I've got to feel good about what I'm doing. I've got to feel okay about this. So I started looking into the science, the peer-reviewed science, not the industry-backed science, but the peer-reviewed science. And what I saw was that all this information was pouring out in support of a plant-based diet. The American Dietetic Association, which requires rigorous and exhaustive science, actually says that vegans and vegetarians are not only as healthy, but they're healthier in terms of far less heart disease, stroke, type 2 diabetes, and even certain kinds of cancer. Well, so I'm like, okay, wait a second. I can actually stick with my, my newfound ethical idea and I'm going to get healthier. And then I looked a little farther and I saw that the one dietary component that's been most, most consistently associated with lasting weight loss, not instant weight loss, but the stuff that comes off and stays off, was fiber. Now, fiber is only found in plant food. So whole grains like brown rice, quinoa, uh, barley, rye, beans like legumes, like uh, lentils and chickpeas, things like that, vegetables, fruits. Fiber is in plant-based food, and that's the thing that helps you lose weight. And what I learned was that fiber basically fills you up, and it makes you feel satiated, right? It cleans you out so you feel light and slim. And by the way, it lowers your blood pressure and cholesterol to boot. So that was pretty incredible. Now, when I looked at the stuff that I grew up loving, which was uh, all the meat, dairy, and eggs, and all that stuff, guess what? No fiber. There's no fiber in animal foods. What you do have in animal foods, though, is a lot of uh, fat and calories. So fat and calories are great when we were cavemen back in the day when we were scrounging for food, we'd recognize something that had all that fat and calories and we'd grab a hold of it because we needed that to sustain us. We didn't know when food was coming along again. But now, that's not our issue. Food scarcity is not the issue in this country. The issue in this country, obviously, is obesity, heart disease, stroke, type 2 diabetes, cancer. So it made sense that we have to sort of modify our 
way of approaching food to address those things because we want to live to a ripe old age uh, rather than dying at 40 like they did back in those paleo days, right? So I was learning all this stuff and um, I realized that the things that I had been taught were super healthy were actually not so healthy at all. For instance, chicken. I mean, I had been always, uh, my doctor even said, you know, you want to you move away from the ground beef and have more lean chicken. Well, one breast of chicken has 20 grams of fat in it. That's a lot. And 27% of that is saturated fat. So, so that's a lot of fat that's going to make me fat, right? It's going to clog my arteries. And uh, that's something that I needed to move away from. What I also learned was that only animal foods have cholesterol. Did you know that? Plant foods don't have cholesterol. So I realized, you know, I'm looking at my family who's got a lot of heart disease popping up, and I'm thinking, wait a second. So if I eat animal stuff, I'm eating their cholesterol, whereas if I eat the plant stuff with all that fiber, I'm getting no cholesterol? That's incredible. So all of this stuff is coming together in my mind. And I'm realizing, OK, I'm going down this path. I'm you know, feeling really great. But what is a girl from Doraville, Georgia, to do? I like my food. I don't want to live like a monk. So not interested in being one of these granola-eating vegans who is annoying to everybody. I, <laughs> believe me. And uh, I, I want to I love my life. I want to stick with my community and enjoy my traditions. So what I decided to do was I decided to lean into it. And that became step three in my weight loss and getting healthy program, is I decided I'm just going to set my intention, and I'm going to nudge myself forward in the slightest little ways, and I'm going to lean into it. And I'm going to just take one little step at a time till I get used to it, and then I'm going to create a little bit of a momentum, and I'm going to keep leaning. So, let me tell you three things that I did that helped this process of leaning into it. First thing, easy peasy, I added an apple a day. Somewhere in the day, I would have an apple, maybe two apples if I felt like it. Apples have a very special kind of fiber called pectin, and pectin stays in your belly twice as long, so you stay fuller twice as long, right? So you consume less calories because you're just not as hungry. Plus, the fiber slows down the release of glucose into your bloodstream from the food, so that crazy uh, craving hunger thing doesn't kick into gear. So I started adding in an apple. Second thing I did, and this is really interesting, is I decided to move away from cow's milk to non-dairy milk. Now, the reason for this is a lactating cow, remember, a cow has to be lactating in order to produce milk. Um, nature intended for that milk to make a little calf put on 1,000 pounds really quickly. And that little calf is going to be a fat, slow animal. That's how nature intended it. Well, I didn't want to be a fat, slow animal. So I decided I'm going to opt for soy milk, almond milk, hemp milk, rice milk. There's a million different non-dairy milks. Easy peasy. Again, not giving up anything, just making a switcheroo, adding something good in. The third thing I decided to do, and this is what made the really sort of big push, is I started switching out my favorite traditional foods that I grew up loving to plant-based versions. So for instance, I loved pizza, right? So I got a pizza crust from the grocery store, and I put some tomato sauce on, and I put some non-dairy cheese, some veggie sausage, popped it in the oven, and Voila, perfect, I loved it. I still got the same food that I loved, but it was a better version. I didn't have all that cholesterol, that saturated fat, far less calories, but I got to enjoy what I loved, so I didn't feel deprived. Remember, I don't want to feel deprived. So I started eating burgers with a veggie patty rather than a beef patty. Not a big deal. What I realized was that I liked all the fixins. I liked the tradition of it, the pickles and the lettuce and the, you know, the bun and all of that stuff. So I didn't really miss the beef patty. I just switched it out. Very easy. I started making chili with uh, soy protein and black beans, stuff like that. 
Mexican night at my house is a really popular night, so instead of having a chicken burrito, we would have a black bean burrito. I still had the guacamole and the salsa and the shredded lettuce and all of that stuff. So all of these things that I loved, I just switched them out in the easiest of ways. And what happened was, I kind of got my groove. I started feeling really better. And I realized that I didn't have to lose anything. It was just a matter of crowding out the old stuff that made me heavy and unhealthy and tired with stuff that f made me feel powered up and cleaned out and light on my feet. And you know what happened? I'm sure you might have guessed it by now. I woke up one morning and I realized, wow, I haven't had a pimple in a long time. My skin's cleared up, funniest thing. And I had so much energy these days that I actually had to start exercising because I was jumping out of my skin. I just, you know, I was like, ah, oh, I, I wasn't used to this. This was new for me. And you guessed it, I lost the weight. The weight came off and it came off gradually easily, without much thought, without much attention. It just kind of came off and it never came back. So here's my message to you is that everything great that we do in our lives, every profound, truly great thing we do in our lives is a work in progress. So it requires an, an emotional intention that really means something to you, like it moves you to your core. And it requires some good motivational information. And then lastly, all you have to do is lean into it. And when you start leaning into it and you take a step and then another step and another step and you make these little tweaks, before you know it, you're in this jet stream of change and you are moving happily along your way to healthy, lasting weight loss or whatever it is that you need to see change in yourself. And I uh, know that your body will thank you. I thank you. And bon appetit.